Hey there, it's Jason from Codemanship with another video diary entry on uh, my continuing adventures with uh, ChatGPT, in particular GPT-4, which you can get access to um, by signing up for um, OpenAI's um, ChatGPT Plus account. It's about $20 a month, I think. Um, now, in a previous video, I did some, some pair programming with GPT-4, where we did some test-driven development for a, a a business problem, so a sort of a realistic use case for something related to my business, my training business, that allows um, client representatives to schedule um, half-day workshops for their for their developers um, through my company, Covenship. Um, and um, it, it went okay, it went okay. There were some problems and some limitations that I discussed in that video, which is already up on the site. Um, but I was interested to know what happens if we flip it around. If I write the code, so in, in pair programming uh, terms, if I'm the driver, the one, uh, you know, driving the keyboard, um, uh, can uh, GPT actually drive me? Can it navigate, if, if you like? Um, so I'm flipping it around for this video. So we're going to do TDD again. Um, we're going to do the same problem that we did in the previous video when I was uh, telling GPT what code to write. Um, um, but this time we're going to flip the roles around. So GPT hopefully will be telling me what to write. I just wanted to quickly go through. I've quickly typed in a prompt here, quite a long one. Um, so let's just quickly go through what I'm, how I'm setting this up with GPT. I've now I've never done this before. This has been without any practice. So we'll see how this video goes. So the, there may be a bit of what they're starting to call prompt engineering required here to get GPT four to do what I want. But maybe not. Let we'll see. So I just said hi I'd like to do some pair programming on the core logic of this business use case and then I paste in the same use case there it is in a little text file there for scheduling workshops half day workshops with a bunch of business rules and etc etc same use case um, that we did in the previous video okay so we won't go into too much detail about how it all works um, all hopefully will become apparent as we get into it okay all right so there's the uh, the name of the use case blah 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 we got some cases here. Actually, I've given it a list of tests. Um, so I'm going to get rid of that. Oops. Scheduler workshop. Twins. Yeah. So I'm going to. Yeah, so I'm just going to give it the business rules and it's I'm asking essentially to make up the cases. I will drive, i.e. write the code, and I'd like you to navigate, tell me what code to write. We'll be doing test-driven development, so I want you to come up with examples with test data for me to use as the basis for each test. We'll work one test at a time, like proper TDD. You tell me the example, I'll write a failing test and show you the test code I wrote. I want you to then tell me what you think the simplest way of passing each test might be. Don't show me any code. This is where we'll see if it understands. I don't want it to write any code or, or show me what I should do. Uh, I want it to tell me what to do in plain English. Um, just describe what code, um, what the code should do to pass the tests. I'll do all the coding. So we'll see how it gets on without a model of the code. Also, I'll be asking you after passing each test to review my code and suggest any refactorings to make the code easier to change. Think of design principles like simple design and solid. Again, don't show me the refactored code. Tell me what refactorings you want me to do. Start by giving me the first example based on the use case text. So fingers crossed, it'll understand what I'm talking about. We'll get something useful from it. So let's hit enter and see what it does. Let's get started. For the first example, let's focus on scheduling a single workshop. Example, client members want to schedule the developer testing workshop on 20th, uh, April 10th, 2023, at 10 a.m. London time with Java as the demonstration language. Okay, right, let's do it. So let's get in and do some coding. So I've got, uh, so I'm going to do this in Python as we did the first one in Python. Let's create a new uh, test fixture. Uh, and it'll do that for me. So we'll call these. Um, something like uh, schedule scheduler dot uh, test or should it be underscore test we'll we'll soon find out as we're in the python world so let's rename this to test so 
scheduler, I spelled that wrong, right? Okay, and so let's go back to our uh, chat window and see, right, example, a client representative wants to schedule the developer testing workshop at London, uh, okay, so let, well, for now we'll just call this uh, test schedule workshop, okay, we'll go with that for now, um, I'm going to write the assertion first and work backwards, so what's the outcome going to be? Um, hmm, let's ask ChatGPT, what should the outcome of this test be? The system successfully schedules, <laughs> what does that mean? It returns a confirmation message containing, um, do confer messages actually mean that an action was successfully executed? Is there a more meaningful way to test the outcome? So I'm not a big fan. For example, people will often write tests where they're, they're executing an action, so they're calling a function or a method, and they want to know if the action completed successfully, so they have it returned, for example, true or false, or return code or something. That's not really very meaningful, particularly if you're doing test-driven development, because the way to pass that test is just return the message. Um, you don't actually have to schedule the workshop. So how do we know if the workshop is scheduled? A more meaningful way to test the outcome could be to query the system. Now, bingo, now it's beginning to think. Um, although why have suggested the return code in the first place. Um, so it's suggesting that we should be able to query the system for the scheduled workshops and check. Right, okay. So let's have a think about this. So assert um, equals. So we'll make it um, a workshop on object. That seems like uh, assert equals. Um, and if we're saying uh, schedule dot um, so if we're saying it's on a particular date schedule on date so let's go back to our um oh no that's the, not the chat window obviously right 23rd of the fourth uh, uh, so that's April, I think it's got to flip them around American style. So it's the um, 10th of April, 2023. So back to, um, how should we do that? We'll do 10th of the 4th, 2023. And that should be the workshop that we try to schedule, workshop. Okay, so let's work backwards. Schedule equals new. No, there's no new in Python. <laughs> schedule, okay, and it's an empty schedule. Okay, and no such class exists as schedule, so let's create that now, just for Jolly. Uh, that'll do for now. We need a workshop, workshop equals workshop and we're going to say the date is well first of all it's uh developer testing did it say the demonstration language was java mm -hmm. okay demonstration language is java We'll just go with strings for now. This is obviously going to evolve into something a bit more sophisticated. Let's test Java 10th of the 4th, 2023. We probably would use proper date times at some point, but again, I'm just trying to keep it simple for now. So there's our workshop. And what we're gonna do is schedule dot 
add. And we'll add the workshop. And what we're saying is when we query, so, so my idea is you can only have one workshop on any given day. So we can identify on a particular date whether or not there's a workshop, and we're saying that that should be the same uh, workshop. Okay, so now let's make this real. So def add workshop, and we can pass for now, and then we need that query method so that this can actually whoop, add, not advert. We need a query method, so let's do that query method on date self date. And again, we can pass for now. So yeah, this will fail because it's not going to return anything. Now let's see that test fail. Okay, why is it failing? We're getting an error. Uh, workshop takes no arguments. Ah. We have no constructors, so we need def. So the minimum thing we need to do, really, is we need, uh, I think it's a title um, demonstration language and date. Oh, and we need a time as well, don't we? Yes. Ten hundred. Right, date. Time. Okay, let's try it now. So now we want an assertion of failing. And that's what we've got. Yep, we're not currently turning returning an object at all. We want it to be the same object. So let me just take all of this code. Um, and we'll paste it into the GPT window. Okay. Oops, that didn't work, did it? <laughs> Control C. This is our failing test code. What? No, I'll, I'll do that later. Uh -huh. In the workshop class store, the provided arguments title uh, its instance variables. The schedule class to find an instance variable to store. You are showing. Okay. It's showing me code. Okay. So it's. It's. Um, going too far. Is that really the simplest thing we could do to pass this one test? So in our original video, when, when I was navigating and GPT was driving, um, it was um, it was generalizing up front, basically. So we'd do one test, and then it would write a general solution. Now, I kind of went with it, but I wasn't particularly happy because we were making a bunch of design decisions. And that's I think that's a real danger with, with um, generative AI, is that it will go too far. Um, and when it comes to, which is fine if it's generating paintings or something, uh, potentially, but when it comes to code, it means that we're, we're making lots of design decisions that are not... Um, uh, that are not having a lot of attention paid to them. It's jumping ahead too far. So in the workshop class, store the provided arguments as instance variables in the schedule class, define an instance variable to store a single scheduled workshop. Um, implement the add method to uh, schedule work instant pair. Um, I don't think 
we need to do that first part yet. I don't think we need instance variables. So I'm kind of trying to get it to think simpler um, because uh, the, the thing with um, my understanding of large language models is they will just statistically go ahead with whatever makes the most sense to them. Um, and I'm using that term very loosely. It's got no real sense. Um, and so I'm kind of having to educate it now. So this is, this is an observation I made when I did the first video. It really felt like I was coaching it. Um, but one of the downsides of that is I'm coaching something that doesn't learn. Because you'll see it'll very probably make this mistake again on the next test. But let's see. Okay, in central class, we only need an instance variable to store the workshop. Right. Simple as that, really. So we've got a workshop there. It doesn't matter. Um, so let's assign this. Uh, no, nope, doesn't have a shortcut for that. All right. So self workshop equals workshop. Okay. And now it'll complain that there is no such field. So let's just do that. Didn't really need to do that, but you know, um, pass, uh, return. So, so it's as simple as that really for now. We just want the, the test to pass. And we got one green test. OK. So let's show it again. Back to our chat GPT window. So I'm not obviously not going to do this whole pro um, problem for the, for the purpose of the video, um, not least because um, with GPT-4, you are limited on the number of interactions you can have with it within a three-hour window, which means that in the real world, at the moment, unless they throw a lot more hardware at it, at the moment, it's not really usable in, in this kind of back and forth way that I'm doing at the moment. Um, so uh, this is the code so far. I should start with, let's go with our test is passing. This is the code so far. Do you think I, we, it's pair programming, we need to do any refactoring? So, off we go. For the current test, the code looks good and works as intended. However, you may want to make some changes into its future requirements. Schedule instance from workshop to scheduled workshop for clarity. In the workshop class, store the provided arguments as instance variables. OK. Suggestion two is not a uh, refactoring, is it? I can't remember if you installed the profiles instance variable, it's not a refactoring. It's an addition to the code that could be useful for future test and functionality. In TDD, do we write? code that isn't required for a test but might be useful later. But yeah, Y A G N I Giagni, you ain't gonna need it. Suggest that you should write code that is required for the current test and add code that might be useful later. By adhering to Yang, you keep your code simple. But you should not write code that isn't required for a test but might be useful. Instead, you should wait until new tests are required. Requirements demand that functionality. So, I'm, I wanted to clarify should I do that second suggestion? context so for now my code is sufficient 
but there is that suggestion of um, yes, the name of this um, thing here. So let's um, let's see if we can refactor this. I've forgotten the shortcut in PyCharm. It's been a week. Um, so let's just look up the. Uh, okay, so rename is Shift F6, of course. Shift F6. Let's rename this to scheduled. So I'm a, I'm a big believer that we should always try to keep, especially keep our code, number one, working, and number two, easy to understand in any state that it's in. Let's just uh, rerun that. Okay, right. Let's move on. Okay, I've renamed work, the workshop field. Feel as you suggested. What's our next example? Interesting that it didn't suggest moving those implementation classes out of the test code. I might I'll pick it up on that in a while. But for now, it's just going to make it easier for me to copy and paste the contents of one file. So maybe we'll leave that to the end. Uh, for the next example, let's test the scheduling restriction. Um, are we done with the happy path? Are we done with the happy path yet? Basically, we, we schedule one. We can only schedule so I, basically i'm navigating it <laughs> to navigate me we can only schedule one workshop uh no it hasn't yeah it hasn't understood so in our system there will only ever be one scheduled workshop are you sure we don't need more examples of the happy path finally getting this so it's it's not driving i'm it's not navigating sorry i'm navigating to get it to navigate me or, or to put, i put it more bluntly i'm coaching it at the moment i'm coaching it in test driven development so this is a little di disappointing but let's go with it a cloud representative has already scheduled developer testing so we've already got the test we had before and now they want to schedule the refactoring workshop on the 23rd at two o'clock uh, sorry, on the 12th or Wednesday at 2 o'clock with Python as the demonstration language. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. So let's uh, go to our test code. And I'm not going to copy and paste this test because the outcome is different. Schedule two workshops. on different days. I should probably clarify that. Um, self, why are you not asked? Oh, there's no underscore there, that's why. And it got all confused, right. Okay, so self dot always assert first, please. So equals, so schedule on date so this time i think it's, it was the 12th we're just going with strings because we're just matching on the date so as long as it has a unique identity if we need to do more sophisticated date stuff then obviously this thing would have to evolve so on the 12th of april 2023 i'm assuming it's putting the dates in that order and this time we're saying second oh no let's call it the python workshop python 
workshop. Okay. And working backwards, we need a schedule. Uh -huh. And that takes no arguments at the moment. And we need a Python workshop. So what did it say the, the workshop details were? Let's stick with it. Uh, refactoring at 2 p.m. in Python. OK. So the date again. So let's start with refactoring. And Python. Uh, what was the date? The 12th of April. I do. It is pretty good at choosing data, I have to say, based on business examples. So that's that's something you you might find useful as a, as a test data generator, um, based on requirements. So if you're a tester, for example, you might find this very useful. Useful. Now we need our first workshop. So that's our Java workshop equals workshop, and that's the same as before. So it's developer testing. Not that any of this matters really for the sake of our. Uh, logic developer testing Java 10th of April 2023 and that one was 10 o'clock so we're not doing anything based on time yet there's no logic related to time yet but there will be obviously in the real system let's schedule that one let's add that to our schedule and now Let's schedule our Python workshop. Now, this is the fun part. Python workshop. Now, because it's just going to replace it, schedule dot, with help if I spell that correctly, add, and then we add our Python workshop. Now, this test is actually going to pass if I run it as it is, just to prove it. Um, because it's just going to replace that instance. So I probably need to put in, I generally don't like to do this, but I'm going to need to put in another um, assertion to say that they are both scheduled at the end. So self-assert equal um, schedule on date. Um, so on the 10th, that one should still be there. So I am, I'm really testing one thing, but in this case, there are two assertions. So when I run it now, it will fail because we have replaced the, um, the single instance of workshop with the Python workshop. Okay, yeah, so they're different objects. Right, so, okay, right. Let's copy that. Both tests are passing. Note that I had to assert that both workshops were scheduled at the end um, because when I asserted just for the second workshop, the test Past. Both, uh, okay, sorry, no. They're not both passing. Uh, this second test. See, even though I'm pair programming with it, I kind of feel like I need another person to, to pair with me to keep an eye on me as I'm writing these prompts. This second uh, test is failing. Here is the code so far. Okay, that looks good. So off we go. Stop showing me code. 
because in 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 a real pair programming situation that's the equivalent of the navigator grabbing the keyboard basically um which we try you know that's that's fine that's fine um but certainly as a, as a trainer and a coach i try to do that as little as possible because i remember when i was taking driving lessons my first driving teacher was always grabbing the wheel and i just never seemed to learn and uh, failed my first test um and then I had another driving instructor who we just chatted and I drove and he would tell me occasionally to do things. Very rarely had to grab the wheel or hit the brakes. Um, and I learned a lot faster. So that's kind of stuck with me. Um, okay. And we're going to have a conversation now about of the workshop class fields, which ones actually need to be stored to pass the test. It keeps trying to get me to do this. It's just the date. We just need the date. <laughs> so, so I told you it would it would it would forget straight away, pretty much. It would forget that we'd had a conversation about Yagni, you ain't gonna need it in test driven development. But anyway, it can be forgiven. Um, so let's do as it suggested. Um, we're going to create a dictionary here. So schedule workshops, we'll make that a dictionary now, an empty dictionary. Um, and when we add the workshop, um, so schedule workshop, let's rename that actually. No, we'll rename it later. Schedule workshop dot, um, I guess it's push. What is it push or add? How do we add things to a workshop? Or is it just that? Um, workshop dot date um, workshop and then return schedule workshop date and what will I need to make this work well workshop will need to have a date I was hoping there'd be there we go It'll do it automatically for me okay let's try it now both tests are passing, lovely. And this schedule workshop needs to be renamed really. Shift F6, now that I remember that. This is why, by the way, um, we were talking about scheduling workshops in, in the business logic. If you schedule a workshop on a Wednesday, we then have to clear the Tuesday so I can spend a day preparing. And a lot of the prep that I do, because the workshops can be in one of four languages when I demonstrate, a lot of that prep time is me actually doing the exercises again so I can remember Python or remember Java or remember C Sharp. Um, so that's very important. Anyway, let's schedule the workshops. There we go. Our code is working, our tests are passing. Let's show it what I've done. Okay. Both tests. Now this is going better than I thought it was going to go based on our last session. Both tests are passing now. Here's the code. Um, stop you right there. Seems I was the question. I thought you had already made changes to pass the test. We got both tests will pass because they don't require storing any specific entries in the workshop class. There's no changes are needed to pass the current tests. <laughs> what have I pasted in there? Is that the old code? Oops, no. Apol yeah, I know, now I need to apologize. Apologies. That's not the latest code. This is. It's interesting that it's apologizing rather than thinking about it. Let's try again. So control C, control V. I'm just going to double check that that really is the latest code. Yes. Okay. Okay. Right, let's do let's do one more example. I could go all day with this, but we've had a bunch of interactions already, and eventually I will run out of inter my allocated interactions and have to go and take a long break. Not that I'm complaining about that. Um, okay, excellent. We'll talk at some point. Excellent. Um, what's 
we can now schedule multiple workshops. What um, example should we tackle next? So there must be a day of preparation before a workshop. Um, so now we need to check to see on a particular date if there's anything already scheduled, whether it's all. Now I could do some fancy date shooting here, but I think there might be a simpler way of doing this. In fact, um, the way that GPT-4 did it the last time we did this, this particular uh, example. So, um, right, okay. Let's write that test. Uh, it's interesting, actually, you know what, I don't think, I think, um, is this case more complex than testing that only one workshop can be scheduled on the same day? So is there a simpler step forward we can take? So I do really feel like I'm navigating at this point as well as driving. Oh, the checks for existing workshops on both the desired dates and the day before. Okay. So shall we do scheduling a workshop? on the same day first. Or scheduling or trying, trying to schedule a workshop on the same day first. So you, you imagine the number of interactions in terms of prompt engineering, if that's what they're going to call it, that are required to get results at this level um, it's a fairly intensive workshop and this is this is an observation I made in the previous video which is at this scale and it's not a huge scale but at this scale it starts to run out of steam um, it doesn't really scale up well it it tends to be much better at solving um, self-contained problems like how do you call this API or how do you use that library and so on and so forth or, or certainly it's this is something I would definitely use for date logic for example in Python what would be a simple way of, uh, of doing this um, but for a, a continued story if you like um, it starts to go a bit wonky um, so for this I think I'm sort of testing its limits here to some extent um, yes that's a good idea let's start with a test case where we try to schedule works on the same day as an existing workshop a climber up into a schedule so we're back with the original developer testing workshop on the 10th of April at 10 o'clock now um, they try to schedule the refactoring workshop on the same day at 2 p.m. Um, um, with Python as the demonstration language. This should be disallowed since only one workshop can be scheduled on any working day. Okay, let's do that test. So this will be the last test I do in this video. Um, test, try, oh, let's, uh, cannot schedule two workshops on the same day. So again, let's assert first. Um, and this time, uh, what we're saying is, no, it's not allowed. So assert, is it assert throws? Is there a throws? Assert error? No, okay. So I'm, um, I'm going to ask it, actually. Um, how do I assert an error was thrown with unit test. So this is real pair programming. You know how to do this. Assert raises. Okay. <laughs> and it's right in code. Right. Function that raises exception. 
Okay, right, so it raises. So I guess we have to put a lambda in there, maybe? It's not really... To, right, I'm going to ask it. Does assert raises take a lambda as a parameter? Please show me an example. Forgot the question about that. Now, there's there is a point here where we might end up having a discussion about should this ever happen, um, you know. But um, we'll we'll since uh, the schedule class is the one that knows when things are scheduled. There's really, uh, I mean, the way you could do it is you could flip it around and say the client should check first before calling the add method. Um, that would be designed by contract, and I would favour that because you would then need to. I would create a user interface that doesn't allow the user to try to schedule a workshop on a date that already has a workshop scheduled on it. But that's, I tried having that conversation with it last time, and I don't think it believed me. It very begrudgingly um, went with design by contract when I've done this in the past. So um, let's anyway, let's do that. Assert raises. So thanks for that. Off. Assert raises. Um, scheduling exception so we will create that scheduling exception and let's create a lambda um, so we're going to call our is it two arrows how do you do how do you do lambdas lambda function that raises exception right you just call the function right lambda um, so we'll call this, this is our Python, that's the schedule, isn't it? Schedule.add, and that's our Python workshop. Okay, let's uh, work backwards from there. So we need a, let's create that class scheduling exception. Does it need to be, if I want to throw it, probably needs to be a scheduling class. So schedule the add. So we need a schedule. Um, and now let's create our Python workshop. All fingers and thumbs this morning. Python workshop. Let's get it right. So it was refactoring, I think. Demonstration language was Python. The date was the 12th, 2023. And the time was 1400. And we need our Java workshop. And this one was uh, developer testing these by the way are the 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 candidate names of what these workshops will really be when this rolls out next year um and that was in java the date was the 10th uh, but we'll make them both the 10th actually what did gpt say um both the 10th yeah So that should be the, oops, that should be the 10th, not the 120th. I don't think there is such a date. And that should also be the 10th. 10 o'clock. And we're saying, sorry, no can do. Scheduling exception. Assert raises. It says there's something missing. Uh, we have a schedule. Schedule. All right. Okay. Lambda. 
Yep, that sounds more like it. And the Java workshop should be added to the schedule. First, okay, let's see that fail. Okay, arg1 must be an exception type. Okay, do I need to, oops. Where's our scheduling exception? I don't know, exception. I'm guessing at this point. Failure, right, test is failing now. So it's not being raised. Right, we're in business. One last time, let's show, okay, is the code for that failing test. So at a basic level, it is kind of sticking with the conversation, which is good to know. Oh, I've done it again. Control C. That is all the oops. Stop. Don't tell me the code. Sorry. This is the now you can probably guess that this workflow, I'm, I talked quite at length about it in the previous pair programming video with GPT-4, where this sort of workflow of copying and pasting code and back and forward, less than ideal, less than ideal. So if, if tools like Copilot X and other plugins that are built on top of GPT-4 can really improve on that, sort of bring it in within the context of the project we're actually working in, in a, in a tightly integrated way, and there's probably di lots of different ways we could do that, um, then this would work a lot better. I mean, I suggested as a basic um, that we do it perhaps using a shared repository, for example, and we can sort of back and forth uh, like that. This is the latest code, and I will um, try to make sure that it is. It is right. Right, let's try that. So, back up we go. There's our workshop. There's our scheduling exception there. Right, so in our add method, if self.schedule workshops, um, can we check some keys? Just got to look at values, 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 values. Where are my keys? From keys. Ah, uh -uh, there we go. Um, keys. Nope. Okay, doesn't. So let's just do it the old-fashioned way. Let's check for none. The the pipe equivalent of null. Ever equals none. It's suggesting there's an easier way of doing that. The place of quality is, <laughs> I had a feeling, is none. Um, actually, should not be equal to none. Not equal to none. And it's going to go is not none, isn't it? <laughs> there we go. With modern tools, then raise. It was our scheduling exception, wasn't it? It's a scheduling exception. Okay, and now they're all failing. Oh, workshop date is not none. Why are they failing? Key error. Um, oh, right. So if it hasn't got a key, so. 
Um, how do I check in Python if a dictionary, a dictionary, a dictionary contains a key? So it is, this is the kind of thing that it kind of excels at really. How do I do this in Python? Um, and it is in many ways, it is chat GPT is kind of like um, Stack Overflow plus plus. Python, you can use the in. <laughs> I had a feeling. Right. Okay. That, yes, like I said, I should have done a prep, a day's prep in Python before this video, really. Um, if workshop this works. If workshop dot date in self dot schedule workshops. So this should work a little better. Apologies for my terrible Python. Okay, we're good to go. It's all passing. Let's one last time say, okay, here's our code. Control C. Yep. All the tests are now passing is the updated code. There you go. And we're out of juice. <laughs> You've reached the current usage cap for GPT-4. So I can't, I, I would have to wait uh, more than two hours now to pick this up again. So in that respect, this, this doesn't scale. Um, if I was sort of working at the level of how do I do this in Python, um, then I probably would find 25 usages enough in a three hour period, probably more than enough. Um, I think I used it a couple of times to do stuff like that, two or three times. Um, but we've hit the interaction, limit, which means our um, our little session here is over for now. Um, but uh, we could switch over to the default model, but that, <laughs> that's going to that's going to send us back to the beginning, I suspect. Um, so I'm not going to do that. And also, the results I was getting with Chat GPT 3.5 were were not great. They were not good at all. They were basically useless at, at this level, at this scale. So let's park it there. That hopefully gives you a feel of the flip side. What happens if if GPT-4 is driving and I'm writing the code? Um, it felt the same in many ways. I was having to coach it in order to get it to to, to navigate for me the way that um, I think it should. So it was suggesting, for example, things that were more complex than they needed to be. Um, it was it was leaving the happy path behind, not not necessarily realizing that we hadn't finished that yet, that we'd only done part of it. So it doesn't quite get the this concept of triangulating in test-driven development. And of course, if you think about it from the way it's been trained, you would expect that it doesn't get that concept. Um, because it's trained on on code bases, um, and you don't necessarily see how that code base emerged through a process of going through multiple test cases for a particular scenario. Um, so it hasn't seen necessarily the process of TDD or the process of refactoring. It ev evidently doesn't really know what refactorings are, um, you know, and um, so there are all kinds of weaknesses here that it needs to be, um, you know, sort of needs to work on, basically. But as with the, the previous session where um, I was navigating and it was driving, um, the results are okay. The results are okay because I wrote the code. <laughs> That's why the results are okay. Um, and that's not, I suspect, what what managers have in mind when they say, if we give our developers chat GPT, they'll be much more productive. I think they're envisaging the, the developer navigating and GPT driving. And you've seen that, and it's, uh, yeah, mm, doesn't really scale. Um, and as we've seen, there's, the, there's this limit at the moment, so it definitely doesn't scale. Um, when we flip it around, that doesn't necessarily work either because then you find that you're kind of in a dual role where you are kind of telling it how to navigate you. You're telling it where you want where you want it to tell you to go next or at least nudging it. But it was useful for look, looking stuff up. So I could have done this in a fraction of the time by myself. 
Um, so on that in that sense, not a time saver at all, except I will say for the generation of realistic test data. If you give it enough to go on, it seems to be quite good at that. It will make silly mistakes sometimes um, in the test data that it generates. And I've noticed it sometimes generating tests where the data is wrong. Uh, for example, in a previous um, exercise I did with it, it was suggesting that, that um, uh, I think 100 minus 80 was less than 20. So it does get some basics wrong in its test data, but so you need to keep a very close eye on that. Anyway, look, that's... The tables turned. I quite enjoyed that, actually. Um, there's more experiments I want to do with GPT-4. I had planned, but let me just bring it up now. If I bring up PowerPoint, for Codecraft Academy. Um, so this is where I'm currently fleshing out use cases and all kinds of stuff. And I thought, and I'd read um, and seen videos on people saying, oh, I sketched out a UI like a wireframe or something, and it generated the code for me. And I thought, oh, fantastic. I'll do that. I'll try that. So I created, I thought, well, I'll be kind to it, and I'll, I'll make them sort of high-fidelity uh, wireframes. So I created, created a wireframe for scheduling a workshop that took you to this page where you selected the workshop name and the programming language, and then you selected a date and a time and so on and so forth. And I was really looking forward to trying this doesn't work you can't do it i think maybe you can do it through the api but there is a waiting list for access to the api um so i was not able to try this out and i'm a little skeptical of the people who said that they've done it how have you done this um gpt4 says it can't do it certainly chat gpt with gpt4 can't do it uh, gpt 3.5 hallucinates badly when it comes to images um it misidentifies everything it told me that this was this this had a blue background and it was a weather report when i when i showed it this image um so yeah forget 3.5 maybe 4 can do it um but i'm i'm a little I, I, there's a part of me that thinks is that vaporware is that does anyone know in the comments below let me know have you tried this how did you do it i'd be really keen to try it um anyway that's where we are um on this session um so uh let's park it there for now i'm going to do one more video about gpt4 it has been fun but my final video is going to be about where i think at the moment it genuinely is useful where it really belongs and we'll talk about some of the um some of the drawbacks of using it some of the real gotchas and how maybe um open ai or microsoft could uh, could dramatically improve on some of these things so anyway let's let's leave it there for now i hope you're well until the next video take care <laughs>